Okay, in this new unit, we're going to be talking about graphing rational functions. So today we're going to talk about finding intercepts and asymptotes. And I'll probably break this video up into two videos. And this one will be about finding x and y intercepts. And the next one will be about finding asymptotes. So first let's talk about what a rational function is. So a rational function is a function where one polynomial is divided by another. So it basically looks like a fraction with polynomials in the top and the bottom. So in this left column over here, we've got some examples of rational functions. Notice that the first one, the polynomials in the top and the bottom are in standard form, which means they're multiplied together. And then in the second one, the polynomials in the top and the bottom are in factored form. On the right side, I just put some examples of things that are not um, of things that are not rational functions. So for example, if I have an x that's an exponent, I'd, it's not going to be a rational function. And if I have any negative exponents, like x to the negative 2, it's not a rational function. So a lot of the things that we see in this unit are going to be similar to the unit we just finished when we were graphing polynomials. Like we're going to find uh, zeros and end behavior, but we're also going to find additional things like asymptotes, domain, range, and y-intercepts. And the more things that you find when you're sketching a graph, like if you can find more intercepts or more asymptotes, the more accurate your graph's going to be. So let's start by talking about x and y intercepts. So first of all, remember that x intercepts are places where your function touches the x axis, the horizontal axis. And then y intercepts are places where your function touches the y axis or the horizontal or the vertical axis. So how do we find these x and y intercepts? First, x-intercepts. They're the same thing as zeros. The last, in the last unit, we called them zeros. Um, just know that those are synonymous terms, so you can use either ones. So you find zeros, if you remember, by figuring out what x values make the whole function equal zero. In the case of rational functions with these fractions, you only have to look at the top part of the fraction. So for example, if I was doing this example down here in number one, if I wanted to figure out what the zeros were, I would only have to figure out what makes the top of the fraction zero. And that's because if you think about fractions, if you have like zero over three or zero over five, it doesn't matter what number is on the bottom of your fraction, as long as the top of your fraction is zero. So to find the x-intercepts, you just take the top and you set it equal to zero. So in this case, I would subtract two from both sides and x would equal negative two. Okay, so then what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to write my x-intercept as an ordered pair. So remember an ordered pair means that it has an x and a y value. Now the nice thing about x-intercepts is that we know what the y value is. The y value is 0 because we set the function equal to 0. So in this case, the x-intercept would be negative 2 comma 0. That's my x-intercept. My y-intercept, you find your y-intercepts by plugging 0 into the equation and simplifying. Okay, so you just say, if I plug in 0 for all the x's, and then 0 plus 2 over 0 minus 3, that just leaves me with negative 2 over 3, and that's going to be my y-intercept. And that's going to be a y-value, and we know our x-value is 0, because that's what I plugged in for my x's, so my y-intercept is going to be 0 negative two-thirds. Okay, so let's go ahead and just look at a few more examples of finding x and y intercepts. So my x-intercept, and my x-intercept, remember again, I'm just going to set the numerator equal to zero. So x minus four equals zero. I would add four to both sides. And I'm going to get that x equals four. So then I'm going to write my ordered pair. Always remember to write the ordered pair. Your x always goes first, which is 4, and your y is 0. So there's my x-intercept. And then for my y-intercept, I'm just going to plug 0 in for all of my x's. So I have 0 minus 4 over negative 4 times 0 squared minus 12 times 0. Okay. Then to start to simplify this, I have 0 minus 4 on the top, which is a negative 4. On the bottom, I have 4 times 0 squared, which is just 0, minus 12 times 0, which is also 0. So I have negative 4 over 0. Now, if you remember correctly, you can't divide by 0. It's kind of against the rules of math. Okay? So if you ever end up with something divided by 0 like this, it means there's no y-intercept. And just know that that's an option. Okay? 
you can totally have the option where there's no y-intercept. We know lots of graphs that have no y-intercept. Like, for example, a square root graph. Like that has no y-intercept. Right? We could also look at a graph that does something like this. That graph has no y-intercept. So don't be scared to say that has no y-intercept. Okay? All right, let's jump down to number three. So with number three, I'm going to set this numerator equal to zero so I can find my x-intercepts. So x squared minus 6x plus 8 is equal to zero. Now, unfortunately, it's not super easy for me to just solve that because I have an x squared. Okay, so we have to solve this quadratic. And we've got two options. We could try to factor, or we can use the quadratic formula. You can choose whichever option you're most comfortable with. For me, I always like to factor first. So I'm going to start by factoring, or trying to factor. Now to factor this, I'm looking for two numbers that would multiply to negative 8, or sorry, multiply to positive 8 and add up to negative 6. And I know that those two numbers, or two numbers that work, are negative 2 and negative 4. So this factors into x minus 2 times x minus 4 equals 0. And then I'm just going to set each factor equal to 0. So that I get x equals 2 and x equals 4. So then when I go to write my x-intercepts, I'm just going to have 2. I have 2, comma, 0, and I have 4, comma, 0. Okay, so those are my x-intercepts. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my y-intercepts, which means I just plug 0 in for all my x's. So 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 8 over 0 squared plus 0 minus 6. Notice that everything that has a 0, right, so like the 0 squared, the 6 times 0, the 0 squared, and that 0 right there, those are all just going to turn into 0. So I'm just going to be left with 8 over negative 6. Then I'm going to simplify that fraction, which you should always try to do. I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 2, and I'll have a 4 over negative 3. Okay, and remember that's your y value, it's your y-intercept. So then my coordinate pair, my ordered pair, is going to be 0, comma, negative 4 over 3. And that's going to be another point that's going to be on our graph. So one of the reasons that we like having all of our intercepts written as these nice ordered pairs is because it gets really easy once we just hop onto our graph. If we were to start graphing this, I could say, okay, I have a point at 2, 0, a point at 4, 0, and then a point at 0, negative four-thirds. And there's three points that I know for sure are on my graph. Okay, there's, That's not enough points to sketch a super accurate graph, but it's a good start, right? Okay, let's look at this last example. So my first step is I'm going to find my x-intercepts. I'm going to set the top equal to zero. So four equals zero. Then you ask yourself, does four equal zero? And the answer to that is no, four does not equal zero. Okay, so if your top number never equals zero, which in this case it doesn't, it means they have no x-intercept. So again, don't be afraid to say, hey, this one actually doesn't have an x-intercept. Okay. Then to solve for my y-intercept, I'm just going to plug zero in for all my x's. And do some simplifying. I end up with 4 over negative 16. I can simplify the fraction by dividing the top and the bottom by the same number. 4 divided by 4 is 1. Negative 16 divided by 4 is negative 1 fourth. So then my y-intercept is 0, negative 1 fourth. Okay? So remember, x-intercepts set the top equal to 0. y-intercepts plug in 0 for x.